I'll call this special workshop meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. Uh, you have copies of the proposed agenda for tonight's meeting uh, before you with the one item for the budget discussions, and I would entertain a motion to adopt the agenda at this time. So moved. No motion and second. Is there any discussion? Here none. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. And I understand that Mr. Willingham is not going to be able to be present tonight. So that's correct. He called early this afternoon and said he had a conflict, would not be able to be here today. All right. Well, I'm going to turn it over to you now, uh, Dr. Woodruff. Mr. Mayor, members of council, this is your third session relative to budget deliberations for the upcoming year. As you'll recall, we have met on <coughs> April the 7th and April the 14th. Tonight we're meeting on the 21st. We hope to accomplish basically the remainder of the budget for your first walkthrough. Also, we had notified you of a potential conflict uh, a week away where the Commandant of the Marine Corps would be coming to town and we asked if it would be possible for you all to meet earlier. We were notified today that the Commandant's schedule has changed and he will not be available to come to Jacksonville. Therefore, we respectfully ask that we continue our budget schedule as posted on April 28th at 5 o'clock if that's acceptable to you. At that time, we hope to primarily go through any loose ends and any issues with the hope that we may be in a position to adopt the budget either May the 5th or May the 19th. Of course, on April the 7th, we went through overviews and revenue forecasts, and then last week we went through the finance, development services, public safety. And tonight we're really going to concentrate on the public services area, which I call public works, and we're going to deal with water and sewer, sanitation, all of those type issues. Before we begin that, though, you asked for some budget notes at our last meeting. There were several items. We dis distributed these to you last uh, Friday, I believe it was. And uh, one was the city calendar, generally to go back to the, uh, the more uh, personal type of city calendar month by month is about $15,000. These are things that in the uh, wrap-up summaries, not necessarily tonight, but possibly a week from tonight, we'll be asking you to give us further direction on. You also ask about obligations under the tourist development. Uh, you'll remember that the tourism development tax, which is a 3% uh, bed tax, generally generates about $900,000, and in round numbers, Two-thirds of that has to go to promotions, so roughly $600,000 a year goes to promotions. Roughly one-third of it, or $300,000, can go to other legal activities. That is not defined as capital, but it does include capital projects. And so you ask of that $300,000, how much is, uh, is earmarked? Of the 300,000, basically 150,000 is already pledged by the Tourism Development Authority for 20 years. So what that generally leaves is about 100 to 150,000 dollars each year under the current formula that could be spent on things other than promotions. Uh, we also uh, gave you notes regarding the fleet maintenance and firefighters. Uh, any of those notes that you'd like to go through, we will. Any questions on those budget notes at this time? Okay, thank you. In your computer or on your book, we're going to begin on page uh, 114, which is the Public Services Administration. And I apologize, but in the first four or five slides, I am going to bounce around just a little bit, and I'll show you why. Page? Page 114 and 115. I'm sorry, page 115 and then actually page 116. Public Works Administration is actually broken into two budgets. You have the general fund portion, which is shown on page 115 or so, and then you have the Public Utilities Administration, but we're really talking about the same people. We're talking about administration of public works. Now, let's go back a second to the Public <coughs> Administration. This is a relatively small budget, and it's primarily because Wally, as the department director, he and Deanna Young and a position that's currently vacant as the assistant director, 
they manage public works. They manage the public services. We do cost accounting to make sure that we are charging, whether it's your time, the attorney's time, or whether it's, in this case, the management of this department's time, correctly by funds. So you will see that from year to year, uh, these numbers may fluctuate. And the reason why they fluctuate is the amount of time that they may be spending on general fund projects versus water and sewer projects. This year, as you've seen in the capital improvement program, there are not a lot of general fund projects. So most of the administration time is going to be charged over on the water and sewer side, as you'll see in a moment. You'll notice in the full time that it's really a portion of a person. Uh, roughly 90% of uh, Wally Hansen's time is charged to water and sewer. About 70% of Deanna Young's time is charged to water and sewer. 10% of Wally's time is charged to things other than water and sewer, and 30% of Deanna's to other than water and sewer. But that's why you, you have these odd numbers. When you look at the utilities administration, though, this is where the this department spends most of its time and spends the majority of its money. You will notice that the revenue source here is obviously water and sewer revenue. And you will notice that the budget has gone up by about $300,000. If you'll look on page 118 in your book, there are two numbers that you will, will reflect on. One is the salary account has gone down by about $90,000. And that reflects the reduction in personnel, as we have discussed before, as the economy has slowed, we do not need as many building inspectors, or in this case, as many construction inspectors. So on page 118 and 119, you will see the administration, and we have taken one position out of this year's budget. You will also notice that there is a capital project of $400,000 <coughs> And that's really where the difference is between the FY15 budget and the FY16 budget. And again, you can see the staffing you know, has reduced. Any questions? I hope I haven't confused you regarding the way that we manage the administrative part of, uh, of water and sewer and then the general fund work. Any questions there? What, what type of capital expenditures are placed in the administration? It's actually the um, water sewer capital reserve. And with the new projects that are coming on, Parkwood, um, the debt service dropped off about $400,000 in the water sewer fund this year. So we elected to put 400000 in the reserve to pay for that project. As you know, we, we are reserving that money so that it's, it's reserved to pay the debt service on the new project. So it's basically putting in a savings account. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's referenced in a 99 project, right? I mean, that's the, um, the capital reserve was set up in 1970. Oh, okay. And so that's a 70, 99, oh, okay. Oh, the okay. year 70. Yeah, we, we thought we were in, in 2015, <laughs> apparently we're in 70, 99. Okay. Uh, that is one of the notes that uh, we, although we didn't address it, that's one of the comments that you made last week is maybe in next year's budget, we want to clean up some of those notes and we will look at that as far as, uh, as we move forward on that. You have the same general uh, activity between engineering public services and engineering water and sewer. If you notice on page 120, you will see this portion of the engineering budget, and that reflects also a reduction of one engineering technician position. The salaries in this area on 122 have gone down by roughly $50,000. Uh, generally, that budget is stable other than the reduction relative to personnel. When you look at the, obviously, the employment numbers, you see that we've cut from three to two. The bulk of their time, though, is spent in public utilities. And let's talk a second about what the if this is the water and sewer engineering, why is it that you have a general fund transfer of $311,000? So here's Gail. 
That's actually a transfer from the general capital reserve to make the debt service payment on the public services complex that we built a number of years ago. There are general fund uses out there, so that's the general fund's <coughs> contribution to that overall debt payment. Okay. And again, because that was actually a water and sewer debt, we're paying our portion of it out of the general fund. So, and then you can see the, the revenues and generally that, uh, that budget has stayed stable. When you look at operations, the operations have dropped drastically, but don't get excited. The reason why they've dropped drastically is because of capital projects. If you will recall, we entered into a contract for the long-term maintenance of our water tanks. I believe there were three or four? Three. Three in there. Because the contract was, uh, when you sign it, you're obligated, we had to go ahead and put almost a million dollars in a special reserve account. That's really what you're seeing, you know, when you when you look at the operations going from one point uh, two point six million down to roughly one point one million in that line. It's primarily because of that million dollars that we had to fund one time. If you look at the other operating areas. Salaries have also gone down because, again, here is an area where we have uh, three vacant positions in engineering that we are not going to be funding. So the salary component of this budget has gone from 828000 down to 634000 because we are not filling positions. And again, that's based upon the slowdown. I'll be the first to tell you that Maybe three years from now, seven years from now, we will be right back here at the budget table and we'll be saying, you remember when we took these people out of the budget because things were slow? We need to put people back into the budget because people uh, are now building many new subdivisions in Jacksonville. But this is really a reflection of uh, you know, managing and efficiencies and making sure that we're not overstaffed based upon the workload that is there. Anybody have any questions regarding what we're doing with those positions or why we're moving the numbers around? Those were all done through attrition? They were all done through vacant positions, that's correct. No one was laid off. What happened in 15 that these, uh, that section number two, expenditure insurance contracts and training and fleet? That was a rollover, mm -hmm. Gail, was it? That's the um, water that's tank the maintenance we were talking about. It's on a purchase order to make the payments for the entire life of the project and it just rolls over from one year to the other so we don't budget for it but then the budget rolls over to the next year so it's one million and 15 and one million and 16 as well or mm -hmm. it will roll over to 16 mm -hmm. a million yeah. about a million dollars it's right at a million and what we have to do we have to keep the full contract there because remember we actually we we have seven water seven is that the number Okay, so six plus one is seven, right? <laughs> we, have, we have seven tanks that we maintain. Every every time we we update a tank, that one basically comes out of the pipeline and a fourth tank comes in. So we have to keep that million dollars. So until we have done all of the seven tanks then that million dollars will stay. It will roll forward year to year. Oh. It's so. a 10 year contract. It's a 10 year contract. So, and we're obligated for full million dollars over the 10 years. The other thing that you'll notice under engineering is the Park Lane Stratford project. This is the beginning of that very large capital improvement project. And that also brings up a, a quick note. Uh, Mr. Thomas asked me the other day, will we come back to the capital improvement budget? And the answer is yes. Any of those items when we, before you adopt it, we will come back and look at the list, not only those things that are gonna be funded in 2016 budget, but also any things that are out there in other years. For example, uh, he mentioned one specific project that he felt uncomfortable in the year that we had allocated it. Fine, we can move that to a different year. 
So, you know, the capital improvement budget is certainly not finalized other than from a staff standpoint. And you can give us direction on any of those projects as to how you feel they should move. So. <coughs> And you can see on this chart uh, the reduction of the three personnel in, in the engineering uh, area. Facility maintenance, I will tell you, there's a young man who's sitting in the audience that I have really come to count on very, very strongly. Uh, and that is Alan Baker. Alan was promoted inside, from inside to become the division director. He has done an excellent job. He understands what customer service is, and the department heads truly enjoy working with him. Because of his success in leading his personnel, last year we moved a custodial position that was working for the public safety director, and we put that person under Allen. This year we're taking the custodian that works for uh, recreation and putting that person under Allen. It doesn't make a lot of sense when you have a person who can lead people to have different fun the same function reporting to different people. So as part of your three E's, this budget <coughs> reflects that Allen will be gaining one employee. That's actually not an increase except in his area. You'll recall when we dealt with recreation that we took an employee from the recreation and programming area. That person has been transferred over. Another thing that we're doing in this year's budget, in the past, many of the departments have had, for lack of a better term, their own maintenance fund. So if you needed gutters repaired at the recreation department, they had money for it. Well, if Alan's in charge of all the facilities, he should be in charge of all the money to take care of the facilities. So this is an item where you will actually see that his budget has gone up. And the reason why it has gone up is exactly what I explained. All the custodians are now working for him. These little pots of money that are out there in the other departments, Gail and her staff have worked with the department heads to move them over so that they're now under one person. Now that doesn't mean that when Michael LaCroix in the winter has bad weather and he wants to take some of his uh, lawn mowing maintenance folks and go inside and paint a building that they're not allowed to do that. They'll still be doing that. For example, this past year, they, they believe it was Northwoods that y'all painted the inside of it during bad weather. A couple of years ago, they painted <coughs> the entire gym in, at the Commons and the entire gym at Jack Amiette using parks and recreation mowing crews on bad weather days. That's just part of your 3E program. But the money for buying the paint is now in one place. And I think you'd agree that's a, a logical budgeting process. And here is the chart that reflects that one additional. Now, as I was reviewing this, I asked myself the question, why do we still have a city hall facility maintenance budget? And to be honest with you, it is primarily because of the way that this building functions with so many different funds. So here you can see the budget just for this building. It's generally a flat budget. And you can see that we have one custodian. We used to have two. And two years ago, we froze that position because we knew that when the public services, I'm sorry, the public safety building was finished, we would need an extra custodian there. So where we used to have two here, we have one that's full time. Anytime other things need to happen, Alan will bring those people to uh, do extra waxing or extra cleaning. But that's pretty much how we handle the facility maintenance side. Any questions or comments on that? One thing I, I, I will say, and this is again an advertisement for that department. As a taxpayer, we all appreciate a government building that's well maintained. And I will put the cleanliness of our buildings, whether it's a recreation building, whether it's a gymnasium, whether it's this building or whether it's a brand new building, I'll put the cleanliness of your facilities up against anybody's. And I think you are proud of the way that they keep the facilities. I was in a uh, 
city, which who shall rem remain nameless, not not the one you think about, but another one up for a little further up north, in a rec, rec center, just disgusting. I, I would have been embarrassed as a as a as a councilman, and and would have been one of the from the city manager. Why why what? It's obvious nobody's visited that that, that project in a while. So. So yes, we we have very clean compared to what I've seen. Well, thank you. Streets is another interesting budget that has uh, multiple multiple budgets. Powell bill for the listening audience that is state shared gasoline money. It is under something called the Powell Bill because I guess, Mr. Carter, that was the name of the act that, uh, or maybe the fellow who, act, the legislator who probably John, got John, it set aside but before my time. John Powell. John Powell. <laughs> okay. But we get money back from the state to maintain uh, city streets. The other thing is most people in Jacksonville still do not understand that most of the major streets in Jacksonville do not belong to the city. For example, 17 and 24, Hargett, Gum Branch, Henderson, uh, Onslow Drive, and many of the other major roads belong to the state. So when there are potholes, Johnny Stiltner will get a call. The mayor's office will get a call. We refer those. We try to explain to people what's going on. We refer those to the DOT. All of your local roads, though, the roads basically in front of your home, those are city streets, almost all of them, although we do have some private streets. The mileage is turned in every year along with the population, and based upon the state formula, we get a, an allocation of Powell Bill money. Powell Bill funding is actually shown in two categories here. The 1.8 million and the 2.9 million are all Powell Bill money. But in order to get some of the better purchasing, what we will do is lump several years of revenue together so that we can get a lot more streets in that particular budget. So this year, you know, you're looking at, uh, you know, close to 3.7, 3.8 million dollars worth of road projects that we will be doing. Uh, Ron, you or Wally or Gail want to further explain that? <coughs> Apparently no. Okay. What are your major redos this year? Do you, do you know what those would be right off hand? I'm going to have to call and phone a friend over there. <laughs> That's from Michelle. Um, well, uh, I think we're, we're Project. Um, I just don't know them off the top of my head. I'm sorry. We'll get that list for you, though. So we're borrowing against the Powell Bill future. No, that one. we're, other we're using reserves. Other finance. Uh, that's the other financing is reserves. Yeah, is the reserves. So we're not we're not borrowing money against the future. We're actually using our saving account that has built up the last year or so. How long can you keep uh, not appropriating an allocation? I believe the law says you can accumulate 10 distributions. It used to be 10 years, but now they distribute it twice a year, so it's down to five years. Five years. I don't know that that's been changed. That was one of the consequences of breaking it up into two years. Twice With the streets we need surface, why? Have we used some of those funds to accelerate the program? I think we have been using some of the fund balance. And what happens is we budget um, in the general fund for the operations for the streets division. And inevitably, they don't spend all that money, so it goes to a Powell Bell Reserve and general fund. And this year, we're just moving what's accumulated there over to Paven Streets. When do you get the Powell Bell? funding notification as far as how much you're going to get. It's October. Okay. okay. One of the things that we did recently is we also changed the method by which we do our streets. So we spent 
quite a bit. We spent longer than normal researching that and evaluating our streets to get that project finished, which is the one that we completed last fiscal year, I believe. So it was, there was, we, we actually skipped a fiscal year there too. But you would say then we've had this conversation before that we're pretty behind on resurfacing. That's correct. Well, to be quite frank with Mrs. Zara, you will always be behind given the revenues that you have. Well, that's what I'm but saying. We are, catching, we are not getting as far behind as we used to because you have changed the program. Remember, Mr. Stiltner gave you um, some suggestions about spending more money on the C-class road mm -hmm. so that they wouldn't fall off. And by doing that, we're addressing many more streets rather than spending all of your money on the on the F streets. And you're, you're referring to how we resurface them, too. We're not going as deep. We're using the that other method. I don't know the name of it, but. That's correct. So you're able to do more. That's miles. Correct. More yes. miles. Is yes. there, uh, I don't want to create additional work, but uh, at some point, can we get an update, uh, updated street. schedule of, of street rehabs? Sure. I can tell you right now that uh, my staff, I'm expecting uh, final plans for our FY15 streets uh, within the next two weeks. So right, we perfect. Can go to bid. That'd be great. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there like to know when their their street may eventually get uh, worked on. So that would be good information to put out to the public also. On the chart that's on the uh, screen, I, I want to draw to your attention uh, the sidewalk installation. For many years, we have budgeted $180,000. While we are certainly not uh, complete with our sidewalk work, we have come a long way. And in order to direct more money to street paving, we have changed that from $180,000 this year to $100,000. I want to make sure that you're comfortable with that. We still will be doing sidewalks, but again, you know, road resurfacing that gives you an extra eighty thousand dollars for road resurfacing anybody have a problem with that okay. the thirty three thousand that's shown on the screen for sidewalks on piney green the dot did not put any money in that project for sidewalks not the entire length from 17 to 24. we can only spend powell bill money inside the corporate limits and most of Piney Green is outside although there is uh, a degree that is in the ETJ the city cannot build sidewalks in the ETJ with tax money because it's outside the corporate limits we cannot build sidewalks in the ETJ using Powell bill because it's outside the corporate limits these will be sidewalks that will generally go from highway 17 generally down towards country club light not necessarily all the way down but that portion that's in the city we will be putting sidewalks in there so <clears throat> also on the powell bill uh, looking at the utilization of personnel uh, johnny has recommended that we uh, change one employee we have uh, reclassified the person from an equipment operator three to equipment operator two, which is a downgrade, and actually move that person from Powell Bill funding over to the stormwater drainage fund, which you'll see in just a minute. So there is a reduction here, but it really is an increase in another part based upon actual workloads. Richard, our sheet shows 14 and 14. Uh, yes, sir. And uh, that's a note that Gail had sent to me that said, uh, the actual number in the 15 in the current 15 budget is 15 people mm -hmm. and so this instead of 14 14 it should be 15 going to 14 Got it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now the other side of the street department is what we call the non power <coughs> and this is where all your mosquito control work all your sidewalks any type of uh, you know, signage, the pickup of dead animals, uh, maintenance and repairs, those type things that don't fall under the uh, streets part as far as road work. If we have dead trees, and this is also the area where we do a lot of demolition of slum and blight. I'm very pleased to uh, mention that just this past week in uh, Councilmember Washington's uh, ward, uh, we had a, 
uh, old building on Market Street come out. So we've taken out three buildings there in the last uh, year or so on Market Street. And that's certainly improved the visibility of that neighborhood as you come in off of Bell Fork. But uh, Johnny's people do a great job. Uh, just about two weeks before that, there was a vacant and dilapidated house on Court Street that Johnny's folks took out of, um, out of Councilmember Willingham's ward. So you can go around the city and you can still see some slum and blight, but not nearly as much as we used to have. Richard, how's the new mosquito spraying techniques going? I know that we switched to something different last year. Is that Johnny, can you work? come up to the table and just? So I, mean, I don't can. mean to take any time. No, no, that's important. As you know, uh, Bobby Hewitt, who is our mosquito man, uh, has been out uh, with a uh, uh, medical matter. We hope that in the near months that he will be returning to us. Johnny, please. I won't pat myself on the back, but I think the city needs a pat on the back for this one. This uh, purchase of a spray outfit and an ATV to get into areas that we've never been able to get into before and treat vegetated areas that will last up to 12 or 14 weeks of a killing cycle. To compare that to a 30 minute drive down the street to catch whatever's flying through the air at the moment is what you have. So the comparison is on a scale that uh, you can't compare. It's just incredible that we've got a lot of contacts from people noticing the difference. Our mosquito count population changes when we spray those zones. Now I'm not saying it is constant, constant, because there's so many mosquitoes out there, it's uh, hard to do that. But we did the LTS uh, site last year, first time in this method. And I had a lot of results from the utility superintendent plus uh, Williams. He uh, had told us that it made a significant difference. You could go out there and drive. If it hadn't been treated, your windshield area would be full of mosquitoes. You wouldn't want to even get out of your truck. I drove around the ponds, and I found that to be true. I didn't want to get out of the truck. But thank you again for purchasing those items. It was less than... I don't know, $20,000, much less, but uh, it was around that area. And I think the public ought to be ready to see us in areas that we've never been. And we'll be in behind their houses or behind parks. We're going to treat the Williams Farm area first time this year in that method. I've been working with them some. So hopefully we're going to make a difference in trying to catch the mosquito in a, a zone before they get into our city limits as far as the majority. Uh, you'll still have backyard drainage problems with little things, a bowl or a cup or a dog bowl that's creating mosquito problems. So we've but, had significant reduction in expenditures due to less drive times and vehicle maintenance and the method that we were using before. Exactly. So and much better results. Exactly. And I will say, you know, while Johnny's up here, uh, we, have, we have a team full of stars and what Johnny and his folks have done on tearing down structures and fixing sidewalks and just re, you know everything uh, had a, a a call in not too many months ago about a deer that was hit <coughs> and Johnny's folks had it picked up within an hour. I mean these are the type of that type of, of customer service that you have stressed as the leadership of this city. That's exactly what every department gives and Johnny is doing a great job. See another thing with the mosquito spraying technique is there, there's increasing limits on how much of the mosquito killer that you can actually dispense in, in geographical area without having special permits in that. And what this does is, is allows us to use the amount we use in a more effective way and stay below the thresholds. So it's also safer, you know, for the community because you're not just putting it out on a broadcast basis, but focusing on a more uh, significant areas. And Johnny, why don't you stay with us a second because, you know, the next part of uh, the street's budget is the stormwater portion. If you will look at page 141 on stormwater, uh, this is a self-funding department 
Uh, several years ago, the fee was $4. Uh, today, the fee is $5 per, uh, per uh, equivalent unit. A unit, if someone asked me before what a unit is, that's 2,850 square feet. Different cities have different units, but generally it's the same. It's generally what one single family home would have as impervious surface. There is no recommendation in this budget to modify that fee. What you will notice in, in this area uh, from an expenditure side is that if you will notice on page 141, you can see the salary did go up. That's to reflect the fact that you increased from 19 to 20 people. That's where you went from 15 down to 14 in the Powell Bill crew. So the streets, uh, stormwater uh, went up <coughs> by one personnel. Primary area here uh, is debt service. You will notice about $600,000 a year goes into the debt service part. And the other part that is a real successful story is what Johnny does regarding the inmate program. And Johnny, would you review what you do with the inmate program? The past 20 years, we've used the prison inmates to come down and, on a workforce and I've observed it for at least 18 years, and with two crew leaders, we rotate between four, but eight inmates a day working for a dollar a day, the city pays that, and they, of course, get that in their account at the prison. But to get a many variety of folks, uh, they change every six months. We rotate them all out. We used to not do that, but the program was so good that we said, hey, uh, they get accustomed. If they've been here over a year, things happen and changes to it was evident when we started a rotation cycle and it has worked well. Uh, we believe that their time and if you compared it to a salaried person and you needed the drainage system clean with eight of personnel, you will probably save in a range of a little over $100,000 a year in the salary method. And that counts the band and two people to manage them. But I, I believe this program works. We talked about getting additional inmates, maybe go up to 12 for one more crew. That's still in, in a talk concept, but uh, it may happen in the future if there's funding available. And if city council wants to approach that, I'd be more than happy to, to discuss it later on. But the inmate program is worthwhile. Yes, it's frustrating sometimes but it's still a worthwhile source for us to have a, a labor force. And that's the force that uh, does a lot of your backyard uh, ditch cleaning where you get citizens call and say, you know, debris is down. It's where you get a lot of, of the, um, <laughs> if I use the term, less glamorous work that absolutely has to be done, <coughs> whether it's simply, uh, you know, cleaning out from behind somebody's house or just cleaning out catch basins. Although it's not a, a decision package, in order to expand that, it's really not the money for the personnel. It is the full-time employee, and it is the cost of the van to transport those folks. That's where your money is. Johnny, anything else on that? No, sir. Okay. Unless there's any questions from council. And of course, as I said, you can see uh, the staffing that's there. Now, that's another error in your book. Your book showed 100 on page 142, 20 and 20. It's actually 19 going to 20. <coughs> Water and sewer non-departmental. That's page 144 in your book. Uh, Generally, you know, you will notice that uh, there is a modest increase in this. Uh, it's, if you will recall, when we agreed with Onwasa relative to the sewer improvements on Piney Green, we have annual payments now that we make. Roughly $227,000 a year is paid to Onwasa relative to, the, to our portion of that uh, facility that was improved there. And then also every year relative to Country Club and Sunset Acres, 
You'll recall that those folks are on uh, the Onwasa system, not the city system. So there's money that goes there, roughly 120, roughly $125,000 a year that the city pays to Onwasa uh, for that service. Now that uh, the vast majority of that is paid through the fees that those residents pay to the city that in turn are passed on to Onwasa. At some point, we do hope to negotiate out of that contract with Onwasa, where those would become just city customers. Uh, we have brought that up on numerous occasions with the Onwasa management and have not uh, received any favorable uh, indications on that. So. Gail, any other comments on non-departmental water and sewer? Pete Deaver has, for quite a while, taken on the responsibility of utility maintenance. This past year, he also stepped up with his responsibilities with the city and is now the supervisor of the land treatment site. So as we look at these budgets, we're very fortunate to have Pete doing these things. We're also very fortunate to have William, who has joined the management team out at Land App, so they will be certainly invited to make comments as appropriate. When you look at the uh, utility maintenance, you will see that the budget has gone up substantially. And the reason why it has gone up substantially is really shown on page 149, and that has to do with your capital projects. On the expenditure side, it's shown in better detail. The operating costs for utility maintenance as you will recall, the utility maintenance it covers over 300 miles of water and sewer lines in the city. It covers all 45 lift stations. We have an individual budget in the detail budget of every lift station, so you can see the repairs for it. You can see the electricity bills for it. Uh, to show you how much a lift station costs to operate, the main pump station, which is basically here at uh, 17 and Cheney Creek, that's about a quarter of a million dollar budget a year just for that one lift <coughs> station. Why? Primarily electricity and then parts. Another like Henderson, which is not nearly as large, or Ellis, which generally the same size, those cost about $60,000 a year to fund the electricity and the maintenance of those. And that doesn't include personnel. Overall, though, you can see that once the capital projects are taken out, uh, Pete has held the line on utility maintenance. Last year, you were very kind to pass along a rate increase. I know that was a difficult thing to do, but I will tell you, if you think of the big dig that took out almost $300,000 worth of unexpected expense, that was in Meadowood, Meadowbrook. Meadowbrook. And then you look at the number of lines we have every year that when we have frozen ground, the water pipes or the sewer pipes have problems. Uh, this is one that, uh, you know, the, the fees, we were just blessed that you increased the fees this year so that we could overcome some of these major unexpected repairs. It's one thing to look at your capital budget and say, as this year says, Okay, we're going to, you know, take Blue, Blue Creek School Road and we're going to put in a new line. Or we're going to take the Black Creek Wells number five, one and five, and rehab them. Those are things you can plan for. What you can't plan for are the things like what happened at Meadowbrook. And that's why we have to have a reasonable operating budget. Pete has 29 personnel that work in this area. And I will also say that since he took over the responsibility of the land treatment site, that those personnel are really much more intermingled with the LTS staff, and they do many things out there to assist. And that holds down the number of staff personnel that you need at the LTS. Wally, you want to add anything to that? No, sir. Pete, would you like to? No, sir. You covered it. William, 
Other than the fact you think Pete is handsome and you appreciate all that he does, right? You didn't say that on the record. Right? Okay. Um, on the water supply side, we're very pleased that these budgets have stabilized. You've now been through a full operating period of the new plant. Uh, Joe Grimm, who is here, he's also the team uh, professional golfer. Uh, he is doing an excellent job of managing that area. Uh, now, Mr. Thomas, I hope you asked the question, why is the budget on water and sewer revenue down $300,000 this year? Why is the water sewer budget down $300,000 this year? Thank you. Gail, <laughs> tell him <me> what. <laughs> Well, and the revenue number, that is just a plug to match the expenses. But on the expense side, that's not the total water sewer revenues. We plug each division. Um, on the expenditure side, the debt service has decreased. We have a loan that's being paid off this year. We had about five payments on it. And then um, we had some significant interest payments this year that are dropping off. And the, the important thing there is while the economy has slowed in the community, and you will recall we do have, I believe it's sent out quarterly, a report to the council and also to the Water and Sewer Advisory Board that shows connects and disconnects. Uh, that has stayed reasonable. We're not seeing any, any trends that are catastrophic by any means. And that's why when you look at that revenue number, I don't want anyone to think, oh my goodness, are the revenues dropping off $300,000? No. The budget requirement here to match the expenditures has dropped off that much for the reason that Gail mentioned. One thing we would mention is though uh, your facility fees are slacking off. We're fortunate we still have a degree of commercial growth, but there are very few facility fees being paid right now for anything relative to residential. Richard, according to, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. According to your numbers, so you anticipate a lot more late payments based on your budgets. If you look at the uh, at the revenue on late late payments, page 152, the current budget 105,000, the proposed budget 100, basically 138,000, and that's basically not a forecast of the future; it's a reflection of the present. What you will find in the actual final numbers this year, we will have late fees a lot higher than 105,000. So that is a reflection of the, the times, actual trend. the actual trend. So that's why when you see the number up, let's say roughly $30,000 up, it's a reflection that in this year's collections or charges, we're seeing that much more in late fees. And of course, what that tells you is a sign of the economy. Back to utilities maintenance, didn't have an opportunity to raise the question. I see we're contracting out for the repair, the, re, the asphalt for line breaks, rather than streets doing it, is that right? That's correct. Yes, sir. And Pete, would you come up and talk about that? <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, what we had seen was a trend of so many utility cuts that um, streets department, with the staff they had, was not able to keep up in a in a timely manner. So uh, Johnny and I discussed it along with management, and we felt that it was best to contract out a large group of them and get a better unit price per square yard for the asphalt um, and what we've done is um, put that money in the 1801 account and that that money goes for that um, it's all managed by Johnny's staff Johnny's division and but it's funded out of utilities maintenance for all the just the cuts that we do on a daily basis are you bidding that or yes that sir it does get bid yes sir but now you don't bid it on every pothole or every no, cut. No, we, that's twice a year, Johnny. We, we try to do it twice a year um, to get, it goes out to bid, it goes on bid net through our contract specialist and advertise, try to get the best unit price we can get. Who's doing it now? W.R. Willis had the last contract. Okay. 
That's pretty small. I think it was thirty-five dollars a square yard, somewhere in that range, thirty to thirty-five dollars. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Close. So. Okay. Who actually does the preparation work, tamping and so on? Your your people? Um, we when we do our initial repair, we'll we'll compact it and put in coal patch to make it passable okay. temporarily, and then part of the contract I think is they'll cut it one foot larger than our existing patch was, so okay. we get back to solid ground and then compact it and put the two inches of asphalt down. You can stay with us, okay. if you don't mind. And of course, the staffing has not changed in, in that area. One thing I will say, uh, Wally and Joe are currently working, uh, Joe as the plant superintendent, they are currently working on some modifications to the way we do staff that will hold down overtime. You can appreciate that uh, when you have a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week operation that never closes. I mean, you know, people think of the police department always being there or the fire department always being there. Well, guess what? The water plant operators are always there. So they have brought to us some suggestions on how we change staffing that will hold down some of the overtime. And we're currently implementing those on a trial basis. So I certainly commend Joe for his thinking on, uh, on looking at those things. On wastewater treatment, again, you can see a substantial increase in the amount of revenue <coughs> needed. That's because of capital projects. If you look at the expenditure side, when it comes to operations, uh, salaries are basically flat where you have the increase overall though is in the capital areas and that is putting in roughly half a million dollars for I and I work uh, a backup screen at the LTS of roughly 300,000 solids dewatering at the LTS of 150,000 and then the sludge removal of 300,000 now I will say to you that um, as part of the innovative things that you ask us to look at, uh, Wally and his staff, Pete and, and uh, William, have been looking at some new technology that may help us when it comes to sludge removal. And we'll be bringing you more information, but instead of actually taking the sludge out of those large lagoons and having to truck it out and put it on a sludge farm, they're looking at a new type of basically what I'm gonna call aeration devices that help dissolve the sludge on scene. We don't know that's going to be successful. We're just letting you know that in this coming uh, several months, Wally and others will be visiting plants where they have installed this new technology and will be bringing you back reports. That could be a substantial savings over the years relative to sludge removal if we find that that will work. Pete, do you or Wally or William want to add a comment on that real quickly? Well, uh, several months ago, we had uh, we had uh, Arkin Associates come in and gauge the amount of sludge, and per our permit and our operating manual, every three to five years, we we need to be required to remove it. Uh, with this survey that they did, it was estimated based on the depth in the lagoons, there's around 12 million gallons of sludge in the aeration lagoons, um, at a cost of four cents per gallon looking a little over half a million dollars to remove it. Um, if this new process called absolute aeration works over the long run, where you're going from 10 horsepower and 50 horsepower aeration motors to three horsepower and five horsepower, which is considerable savings in our electricity, uh, plus we won't have to fund sludge removal every three to five years. Um, this will, uh, in their words, and they, and they actually give us a written guarantee that if they can do it, so if this all pans out, um, we would have less than two foot of sludge. So, um, and that, that is a written guarantee where we, if it's not successful, we get all of our money back except the engineering costs. So we would get 75% of our money back if it's not successful and doesn't do what they say it can do. One of the things that they, that they do ask is for verification of sludge levels. And what our thinking is that, um, each of you are liaisons to various advisory boards. 
And this might be a task that you might ask your, li your liaison to the Water and Sewer Advisory Board to, sure. to verify. Yeah. I'm sure he'd like to see the city manager go out there with him when he does that. Yeah, I, I brought a map with me if, if anyone wants to see it, you know, or I have electronic, I could email it. But uh, it actually shows the depths. They cut the lagoons into quadrants and physically went out and measured and certified it with an engineer. Generally, how deep is the sludge right now? It's anywhere from three and a half to five and a half feet. And we need to cut it back to two feet. It, yeah, ultimately, the best world is no sludge at all, but that's, that's not realistic. But if we can knock it down, that's actual storage capacity that we're losing as well. That 12 million gallons, that's more storage that we could have. And it also affects the treatment process. How's the algae problem? Right now it's okay because it hasn't got hot. <laughs> no, but the, the algae probes that we have, they do work. Um, it's a matter of, you know, the weather, functionality, rain, keeping the algae probes going. But uh, the last year it wasn't significantly bad. Mayor, I, I would also say to you that, uh, you know, William has been managing uh, out there now for almost a year, eight months. And some of the techniques that he is bringing and Pete is bringing to the plant's management, uh, by varying the levels of the lagoon, you can also vary the temperature of the water. You vary the temperature of the water, you vary the, the breeding ground or the environment in which the algae will bloom. And by keeping uh, the, the levels a little higher certain times of the year, you're actually able to lower the temperature. So by doing good management techniques, which William has brought to the table, we are seeing some positive results. So, <coughs> Pete, anything else no, sir. on that? Does the council has any questions? I just have one, just the uh, capital outlay. I, you know, I saw, I, I see all the uh, capital improvement projects, but capital outlay went up significantly on, yes, sir. on that, from and 50 to 501. Gail? That is, uh, Mr. Warner, that is, um, we're replacing uh, <coughs> two, well, not, excuse me, we're purchasing two um, skid steers for our, our uh, daylighting, lateral maintenance, a new tandem dump truck, and a new uh, attachment, mowing attachment. Um, for that's, it's, it's cyclic replacement is what it is. We're not, wouldn't that be showing up under debt service? We are purchasing this direct, is that what I'm? Yes. We are paying cash for this. We are not cash. borrowing. The, as part of the forestry management program, and I, I sent uh, some pictures maybe about a month ago that showed some of the daylighting activities. Again, uh, you know, complimenting William. Uh, he comes from a forestry background as well as a wastewater and water background. So because of his, uh, in his younger days, he was out there with George Washington cutting down cherry trees, among other things. But because of that, he has a feel for the forest that we have not had in the management out there before. We are doing a lot of daylighting, and now that it is beginning to dry, we would welcome the opportunity. Anytime you see that you have an afternoon or a Saturday morning, and any of you, one, two, seven, whatever, we would love to take you out there and see the successes that they're now doing. To keep those successes moving, though, we have to have the equipment and that's where a lot of this equipment is, is coming this year. But you will see that number go back down because it's like the dump truck that we're buying. Uh, you know, that dump truck being a 16 cubic yard tandem axle truck, uh, it, it'll last us 10 or 12 years once we have purchased it. Yes. So. Back to water supply for a second. <clears throat> Question, maybe a commentary. I noticed new water treatment plant. Forty-seven million six hundred forty-nine thousand. That's just not the plant, is it? That's all the outlying wells and line construction necessary to bring all those wells into the plant, right? That is correct. It included the construction of the plant about a hundred thousand feet of line, um, from six inch all the way up to twenty-four inch, and sixteen new wells, I believe. So when we talk about an increase in the water rates last year, much of that is attributable to the fact that the state required us to cut back on the Back Creek, Black Creek aquifer restrawal by 10 percent. 
So to make up the water supply, we had to invest $47 million <coughs> into a new plant and the ancillary improvements. Everything you've said is correct. Okay. Yes, sir. <coughs> Going back to wastewater. Okay. Anything else in the water, wastewater, or utility maintenance area for Pete? Again, he does a great job. He's a, a very great benefit to us. <coughs> Mayor, if you'd like, uh, we could take uh, maybe a 10 minute break and come back and deal with sanitation. Is that acceptable? Sounds, sounds good. Let's go ahead and take a recess. Yeah.